Okay, this video is, should you take omega-3s? And I'll tell you right from the beginning, I don't take omega-3s, I think it's a bad idea. Um, the video will explain why. First of all, why do women have big butts? Women have big butts and upper thighs because they store extra omega-3s up there. It's an economically efficient place, energy efficient place to store them because our ancestors were worried about starvation rather than carrying up high in the body. That's also why women got little shoulders because uh, their job was basically to survive and be able to you know, carry a baby to term and be able to nurse the baby. So it's kind of like a peacock display. She's got a narrow waist, that way you know she's not pregnant. Then she's kind of got a big butt and upper thighs, so you know she's got the energy resources she could carry a baby, and that would attract a man uh, in the past, okay? And in the present, too, okay? Um, she's got the wider pelvis to be able to deliver baby's head. The, you know, pubic symphysis is shaped a little differently. Okay, so but anyways, it's to carry the omega-3s in a good location, energetically efficient area. Okay, why do doctors prescribe fish oils? They want to lower their triglycerides of the patients in the blood. And that sounds nice to lower blood triglycerides. But you know what? It, it, it raises LDL cholesterol, total cholesterol. So it's not that beneficial. It has a little mild anticoagulant effect, but it's, it's pretty next to nothing. I can tell you that because I, you know, I was an imaging guided surgeon before I became a neuroradiologist primarily. And um, I did thousands of procedures. We never paid any attention to whether or not they're taking omega-3s. It was irrelevant. I put in tons of porticasts, nephrostomies, tons of procedures, okay, big diameter sheaths. Never once did we ever pay any attention to omega-3s. They were totally irrelevant. So the amount of anticoagulation effect is virtually insignificant. Um, it's not cardioprotective. Studies have shown that it's not. It's not been shown to really be helpful for the brain or the eyes. You know, you might find one study here or there, but the bulk of them, and the more you get in industry funding in there, now they're going to start saying, oh, it's good. I'm not buying it. Okay. All right, so let's go to the next one. I'll show you some more stuff along those lines. You know, what is an omega-3? Uh, first of all, when you have a fatty acid, a fatty acid has a carboxylic acid on one side, then it has a methyl group on the other side. CH3 is a methyl group, okay? This side's polar because of all the oxygens, meaning that there's a charge asymmetry and it's soluble in an aqueous solution like water. This part is nonpolar, hydrophobic, okay? Because it's just carbons and hydrogens. They have a similar electronegativity, so there's no asymmetry significantly a charge distribution. So that's more fat, soluble in fat, not soluble in water and aqueous solution. Okay, there's no double bonds in this fat, so this would be a saturated fat, saturated with hydrogen. So that's the definition of it. Okay, now here's the different types of fats. Uh, let me move myself out of the way a little bit here. So basically, here's sat fat. There's no um, there's no double bonds. Mufa, actually, this drawing's a little screwed up. There should be one double bond, a double line here. There's a pufa. So mufa means monounsaturated fat, meaning one double bond. Pufa means polyunsaturated, unsaturations, meaning not saturated with hydrogen. So there's two or more double bonds in a pufa. Okay, so here's an omega-6 fat. Counting from the methyl end, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then there's a double bond. There's a skip carbon, and then there's another double bond, all right? So on the skip carbon, you'll have two hydrogens. A carbon with two hydrogens is called a methylene a methylene group, and they call these a methylene bridge between the double bonds. These methylene bridges have only a weak grab, a weak uh, grab onto their hydrogen, and it can be plucked off. When it's plucked off, something called lipid peroxidation can ensue. Okay, the carboxyl end over here is also called the delta end in terms of the nomenclature. Okay, so a C18 would be number of carbons, 18 carbons. Two is the number of double bonds. And then this little uh, omega W basically means, and then there's a number behind it, six and nine. So there'd be a double bond on the six. So an omega six fat and double bond on the nine as well there. Okay, and the C8 carbon right here, that's the methylene bridge carbon. Um, the, the most important ones to know about is that the basically the parent essential oils are C18-2. So this is linoleic, and it's usually just abbreviated linoleic acid, LA. And that's the only essential omega-6 fat. And then the only essential omega-3 fat is alpha-linolenic acid. Okay, so you got to say that N in there, linolenic acid, ALA. I usually call them LA and ALA. Um, but unique point is that the C18 omega-3 has three double bonds. The more double bonds you have, the more vulnerable that fatty acid is to undergoing lipid peroxidation because there's going to be two methylene bridges, you know, intervening carbons, where there's only one methylene bridge with, uh, with uh, omega-6 fat. That's going to be relevant because the one with the extra double bonds is going to be more prone to lipid peroxidation. Rancidity, that's bad. 
Okay, um, here's one paper saying the person, this is a paper from Dr. Uh, Gregor gave a presentation, okay? And Dr. Gregor pointed out that they were not cardioprotective and he showed a whole bunch of papers on all the problems with these omega-3 fish oils. Increased risk of sudden cardiac death, often contaminated by rancidity, lipid peroxidation products. Uh, they were bad, it was a bad idea. Okay, uh, which doctors recommend to avoid fish oils? Uh, Dr. McDougall, he says, if we eat natural plant foods, we'll always, during all stages of life, get enough DHA and the other omega-3 fats. And that's in Start Solution. It's on page 123. Okay. I went through all of Dr. McDougall's work, you know, pretty reasonably carefully. I wanted to understand it. Okay. And he says things in a politer way than I do, but he's basically saying the same thing. Supplementing with omega-3 is a bad idea. Nathan Pritikin emphasized minimizing fats and, avo and avoiding oils. Uh, Nathan Pritikin said, fat deficient diets, they don't exist. Any naturally cho chosen diet will always have enough of all your fats. Okay, and what does uh, Nathan Pritikin base that on? He did a pretty thorough review of the literature back in the 1970s. There was a study by Winnitz, and Winnitz um, was studying these chemically defined diets, and he had people on the diet for six months at a time, and they were fed only 0.7% of fat, so less than 1% of fat. I say that because you hear all this nonsense about essential fats. You hear all this nonsense about good fats, that people need all these good fats. Not true. Okay, they were taking less than 1% of fat, and it was only the omega-6 fat that we just talked about, linoleic acid. So C18, 18 carbons with two double bonds. All right, and um, they did very well. There were no adverse physical or psychological effects. BP and cholesterol level were decreased. They were good. Okay, so less than 1% of calories from fat. That's worth remembering. Okay, then another guy by the name of McKean in 1970 also did the same diet as Winnett's, persons on less than 1% of fat, and these were children, and they also did quite well. So, again, you don't even need 1% of your calories from fat. That's rather extraordinary. Okay, uh, Dr. Esselstyn says no oil of any kind whatsoever. Um, let's see. All right, we'll go to the next slide here. Okay, fish oil supplements in New Zealand are highly oxidized and they don't meet the content of uh, N3, you know, omega-3 PUFAs. All right, so the fish oil were mostly lower than expected in EPA and DHA, so you're not even getting what you want. There's also some question in other studies, and Jeff Nelson has reviewed it, that you're not necessarily getting these EPA and DHA even into the brain. There's a guy by the name of Brian Peskin, he's sort of a famous uh, uh, fatty acid researcher, and he thinks omega-3 supplements are a joke. Uh, he thinks that they're prone to lipid peroxidation and other problems, that you're basically overdosing with omega-3s. And he also shows papers that they substitute into the cardiolipin phospholipids of your mitochondria, which normally contain omega-6s, okay, like the linoleic acid. And he says that when you put the uh, omega-3s in there, because they substitute in because you're basically overdosing with them, he says they're damaging the mitochondria. I'm not so sure about that. You know, I read an article about it. It didn't come flat out and say they were damaging the mitochondria. But it suggested there was an increased risk of lipid peroxidation injury in the inner mitochondrial membrane with excessive uh, omega-3 supplementation. Okay, here's another one saying omega-3. Uh, omega-3 was not protective against all-cause mortality, cardiac death, myocardial infarction, or stroke. Okay. You know, basically they're trying to use it like a pharmaceutical. And what do you get with pharmaceuticals? You get lots of side effects. Okay, here's Dr. McDougall giving a lecture, and he said, look, omega-3 supplements, they worsen type 2 diabetes. They increase your risk of becoming fat, obese. They increase uh, your insulin resistance, so they predispose you to diabetes. You can real quick look, just search your own browser, omega-3 association with atrial fibrillation. So my point that I would make is, how would a supplement that increases your risk of obesity, increases your risk of diabetes, it increases your risk of atrial fibrillation, it increases your risk of sudden cardiac death, Okay, it's an immune suppressant, thus it also increases your risk of cancer, um, of prostate cancer in particular. In mouse studies, it increases your risk of metastatic disease. It raises your blood cholesterol, even though it lowers triglycerides, it raises your blood cholesterol. So how is something that have those eight major side effects going to improve your health? Sounds to me like BS, okay? They always manipulate the study industry to try to make it look like uh, it's doing a benefit, but you just have to use common sense, okay? What's the outer capsule made out of? You know, is that made out of beef, out of glycerin? Um, what, um, you know, how much rancidity do you have? Why do you have to put it in an opaque bottle and stick it in the fridge? Because it goes rancid super fast, all right? 
And then they're going to say, oh, well, we evolved, you know, and uh, for our brains, we need it. We need a little bit of birth. That is true. Uh, but, you know, it's easy to get that from our plant foods. All right. You know, other animals don't supplement with those things. OK. And we're not natural to eat fish. Theoretically, if humans did evolve from equatorial Africa, a hot climate, that's not where they need omega-3s. They'd actually be a liability there having a lot of them. You know, that's more of a thing for cold ocean water fish where it's near freezing because they have a different uh, freezing point. Okay, what I'm trying to say is that evolution argument is bogus. All right, uh, prostate cancer risk. They increase the risk of prostate cancer. This guy's a pretty prominent researcher, Brasky, and there were several different studies where they increase the risk of prostate cancer. And anything that increases the risk of prostate cancer usually increases the risk of breast cancer, but I haven't seen the paper to show that yet, but I will bet that that's the case. Okay, therapeutic potential omega-3 and autoimmune disease. Okay, they suppress immune systems. Some people say you got to get all these omega-3s uh, to treat autoimmune disease. And what I would say is why not first look for the cause? Because, again, you're using it like a pharmaceutical rather than what the vegan, low-fat vegans like to do is we like to reduce our risk of something. So what I would do with an autoimmune disease, number one, focus on preventing leaky gut. Eat more dietary fiber. Avoid all the things that increase your risk of leaky gut, leaky, uh, leaky gut like, uh, you know, Fluoride in your water, chlorine in your water. Um, you can easily remove that. Reverse osmosis. Um, what are the other things? If you're taking antibiotics, emulsifiers, processed food, if you're eating high-fat diets, if you're eating oils, if you're taking you know, NSAID medications, there's a lot of things that will cause leaky gut. You want to avoid all those things. What else? If you're inhaling volatile organic chemicals, all those things that, transfer, that uh, transform rapidly from liquid to solid, like paint, glues, adhesive, time at the nail salon, inhaling printer zinc, all of those things, trichloroethylene, uh, will have an effect that they can sometimes damage tissue, make damps, and cause uh, autoimmune disease. Fluoride can also cause autoimmune disease for those reasons. Glyphosate can substitute out for glycines and damage tissues and cause autoimmune disease. So that's a chemical mechanism of autoimmune disease. So what I'm saying is I would fix all those problems. If you still have an autoimmune disease after having fixed all those things, then I would consider immunosuppressing with uh, these omega-3s. But I would do that only as a last resort. Well, that's actually not the last resort. The last resort would be those chemical uh, drugs that are immunosuppressants, like methotrexate or something. I would, I would try to fix it with this first. But what I'm trying to say is I wouldn't go to this first until I dealt with all the leaky gut type stuff and all the chemical causes of autoimmune disease. Okay, uh, omega-3 fish consumption and risk of type 2 diabetes. Another paper showing increased risk of type 2 diabetes with omega-3 fishes. So to me, I mean, I, that's like crazy nonsense. How is something that increases your risk of diabetes going to make you healthy? It makes you fat. It makes you diabetic. Raises your total cholesterol. Come on. Um, causes increased insulin resistance. Increased weight gain. Okay, here's two papers on that. Oh, this is just other problems with eating fish. All the, you know, the mercury, the PCBs, the other toxins. And I don't know how much of those get into the omega-3s. We talked about how, you know, with all these double bonds, look at this, EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, five double bonds. So you're going to be super predisposed to lipid peroxidation. DHA, six double bonds. That's going to be much, much more than those, uh, you know, ALA was, which you get from the plants. Sounds bogus. Okay, we know it's not cardioprotective, and I don't think it's neuroprotective either. I know there's some recent studies with industry funding, helping to fund them that, in my opinion, make it look better than it is. Okay, here's other previous studies showing that it was not neuroprotective for Alzheimer's, because I know there's some people talking about it being neuroprotective for Alzheimer's, but, you know, you've heard me talk about Alzheimer's too. Alzheimer's is, is kind of a big joke. It doesn't even really exist. It's a fake disease. Okay, uh, this is the prostate cancer additional references. Oh, and here it is showing that it causes colon, it increases the risk of colon cancer metastases in rats. Another paper here that it, it also increases colon cancer risk in rats. It's an immunosuppressant. You would expect it to increase cancer risk. Okay, can humans get enough three? You get plenty from plants. Vegans are not deficient in omega threes. All right, here it is showing the amounts you get plenty from plants. Um, and I told you the, the other things. We talked about the research study. There's just more research studies. So anyways, I hope that's helpful. Bottom line, I don't think omega-3 supplements are a good idea for any reason.